yeah, we do need to like our children as well as love them. It's about having the best relationship you can have with your child. It's not that you're a good mother or a good father. You just have to fess up when you're wrong. And um, you have to have an open mind when the child tells you something that doesn't seem believable. In order to contain your child's feelings, you need to be able to manage your own. Pela primeira vez no Brasil, a psicoterapeuta britânica recebeu o Estadão na The School of Life, que fica na Vila Madalena, em São Paulo. Conto para ela que quando li o livro que você gostaria que seus pais tivessem lido, algo que me impactou muito estava já nas primeiras páginas, que diziam, esse livro é para pais que não apenas amam seus filhos, mas querem gostar deles também. Pergunto, é possível amar uma pessoa sem gostar dela? Quanto essa contradição pode prejudicar o desenvolvimento de uma criança? Yeah, we do need to like our children as well as love them. Now we quite often love them because they're part of us, because we've just got a bond that's sort of like a biological bond with them. And in order to like our children, we have to see the world from their point of view as well as our own. So we have to imagine what it's like having little tired legs that are holding us up. We have to imagine what it's like to feel completely alone and only living in the present when we put them to bed at night. You know, we have to imagine what that feels like for them and we need to feel with them. If you like someone, you feel with them. If you don't like someone, you just want to solve them like a chore or a problem. So if you're treated like a chore or a problem, it will affect you. You will maybe feel that you're less than, less than good enough. You might not feel like you're acceptable. In order to feel acceptable, we need to be liked. Quando comentei que ela já escreveu que os rótulos de bons pais, maus pais não são úteis, Felipa responde antes mesmo que eu possa terminar a pergunta. Oh, I can't bear them. I cannot bear the labels good parent. Am I a good mother? Am I a good father? Oh, I cannot bear those labels because they're looking at parenting as a performance. Did I do a good performance? Stop it. Just stop that. It's about having the best relationship you can have with your child. It's not that you're a good mother or a good father. It's like, have I got a good relationship with my child? Do I like my child? This is got what we've got to work on, not am I good? It's not about you, it's about the relationship. I want, I want the relation, I want the, the, the dynamic to be relationship centered, not, oh, I'm really good at this. You know, we don't have coffee with a friend and come away and thinking, I aced that coffee. Because that sounds like, you know, I managed to manipulate that friend. You know, it, it's, not, it's not how we should be thinking about this relationship. Am I good? Vendo dessa forma, erros vão fazer parte do processo. Como os pais podem lidar com os erros que cometem com os filhos e quanto isso pode ser importante para o desenvolvimento das crianças? We will get things wrong. We will misunderstand our children. We will give them the wrong information sometimes. And sometimes a little child will go, no, daddy, you're wrong. You got that wrong. And daddy needs to have a good look at himself and go, yeah, I did actually. People sometimes say to me, um, but if I say to my child that I am sometimes wrong and I've made a mistake, won't they feel insecure? And I go, no you will be backing up their instincts. They know you were wrong. So if you say I was right when you were wrong, you are messing with your child's instincts and your child's instincts are what keeps them safe. You know, so if you say black is white and the child knows that, but it's told it's, that, it's just gonna mess with their heads. Don't do that. Um, yeah, of course we'll make mistakes. The, the biggest one I made, <laughs> the one I can think about now, I probably made much bigger ones than this, was like, I was going for a walk with my then eight-year-old and she was tired and she wanted to go home. And so I said, okay, you go home, I'm, I'm going to carry on. And we're in the countryside. And when I got home and I met her and she said, a cow knocked me over. And the cow's round 
us very placid beasts. They're not wild at all. And I said, were you, I thought, oh, I, I know what happened. She was scared on the way home. And so she's made up a, a narrative to fit the fear. You know, stupid psychoanalyst thinking. So I said, oh, did you feel scared on the way home? She said, no, I didn't feel scared. A cow knocked me over. I went, mm-hmm, okay. And she knew I didn't believe her. And um, if you just go Bleh, to the cows, they run off, right? They're not fierce cows. But a couple of weeks later, my shoelace came undone in the field. So I bent down to do my shoelace up and a cow came with his head, just knocked me over. I thought, I get it. When you're shorter than the cows, they think they can beat you. And so they knock you over. I mean, not aggressively, they just sort of come up and nuzzle you and push you over. And I thought, she's shorter. So of course they would have knocked her over. So I said, you know, I didn't believe you about the cow thing. She went, I know you didn't. I said, I am so sorry. I got that wrong. The cow knocks you over when it thinks it's um, bigger than you are. And we know all cows are bigger than we are, but they can only seem to judge it by height. And I told her what happened, you know, when I was crouched down, the cow did knock me over. And I said, I didn't realize that about cows. And then I told her, every time a cow comes nearer, just put your hands above the head and then, you, <laughs> and then they think, um, you're bigger than they are. But um, she remembered that for a long time. I had to keep a, she was eight then. I think the last time I had to apologize for it, when she was about 17, you didn't believe me that time the cow knocked me over. So you just have to fess up when you're wrong. And um, you have to have an open mind when the child tells you something that doesn't seem believable. Children lie all the time, it's their special power. Um, and uh, so it's, it's quite difficult to um, know the difference sometimes. Recentemente, vários especialistas da Comissão de Saúde Mental da Juventude, da revista científica The Lancet Psychiatry, publicou um relatório alertando que a saúde mental de jovens, de 12 a 25 anos, vem se deteriorando ao longo do tempo e entrou no que eles chamam de fase perigosa. Na sua avaliação, o que está acontecendo? What is happening is that we're getting over anxious about uncomfortable feelings. We're sort of believing that we should feel happy and contented and not scared or not stressed all the time. And then when we're having normal, uncomfortable feelings, a bit of stress, a bit of worry, uh, a bit of insecurity, rather than going, this is part of life, suffering is part of life, these are uncomfortable feelings, we are pathologizing them. We are giving them titles like a mental health disorder. And so rather than thinking, I'm feeling sad at the moment because a few things aren't going wrong for me, and being able to contain those uncomfortable feelings, parents are panicking and they're outsourcing their children to other agencies to deal with the children's uncomfortable feelings. Uncomfortable feelings, sadness, stress, despair are completely normal and a completely healthy response to the world we're in. But we are pathologizing those feelings. Então você acha que não estamos permitindo que as crianças tenham sentimentos que categorizamos como ruins ou o problema é que estamos diagnosticando em excesso? Both. We're getting scared of um, uh, uncomfortable feelings. And things like social media um, actually seem to bra make, make brands for certain types of um, ADHD, for instance. I'm not talking about, you know, you know, serious, very, very serious distress that has always been with us. But things like suicidal ideation is magnified by um, social media. People see things on social media and think, I've got that, I've got that, I've got that. And it's, it's catching, it's a social contagion. And then we're, you know, demanding that doctors fix this. And a lot of this can be fixed in the home. If the parents have the confidence to be able to listen, contain and not panic. 
Felipa pede para falar sobre as três maneiras como podemos lidar com os sentimentos. In order to contain your child's feelings, you need to be able to manage your own. And there's sort of three main ways of managing feelings. Okay, suppose your child comes to you with a cut finger. Okay, a little tiny child comes with, I've hurt my finger, it's cut. The three ways of dealing with it are one, that's a scratch, that doesn't hurt. You, you push the child away and then the child's left alone with their poor little feeling. That's not good. And the other one goes, oh my God, you've cut your finger. Oh no, we've got to go to the hospital. Oh my God, this is a tragedy. Oh my God, I can't stand the blood. Oh my God. Okay, so that magnifies the child's uh, distress. And the other one is getting down on the child's level and go, oh, you have cut your finger. Oh, a scratch like that can really hurt. Here, let me put a plaster on it and I'll give it a kiss. How's that? The parents can contain. Now, if the parents aren't the child's friend, they won't have someone to, to confide in. If the parents have said, don't be silly about something, then, the, then they can't go to the parents because the parents are a safe home. So I'd say, as your child is growing up, always be a safe home for your child's feelings. I'm not talking about having no boundaries. I think boundaries are really important. And you put your boundary down before you reach your limit. People think that, you know, because I believe in being kind and liking your children and, and being friends with your children, that um, I believe in no boundaries. I really don't. Boundaries are really important. No portal do Estadão, Felipe explica como estabelecer esses limites de forma gentil. Acesse em www.estadão.com.br. Assine o jornal através do site e tenha acesso a conteúdos exclusivos.